What's up, guys? It is a new year, so happy new year if I haven't... Have I put out a video yet? Oh, yeah, I have put out another video uh, about New Year's resolutions and everything. But if you didn't watch it, happy new year, Merry Christmas, everything like that. Um, I've been getting a ton of questions about people, from people who are really interested in ketogenic dieting and ketosis and high fat, low carb, moderate protein. Um, ever since that, I... Put it out there. I started, I finished my prep in October. So I've been doing, I, and I did it a little bit before October. So I've been doing it for about four months now. And uh, this is just the best way so far. I, I started my, my fitness journey being very in depth with my macronutrient intake and stuff like that when I was around 18. So it's been about five years. I'm going on six years. Um, that I've tried many different diets. Um, I've done, you know, high protein, low carb. I've done high carb, uh, moderate protein, low fat. I've done a balanced intake of a, a you know, 30, 30, 40 breakdown. I, I've, I've tried everything. And so far, this high fat, low carb, moderate protein, ketogenic nutritional approach has enabled me to have the best results. And it's very hard to convince someone that fat is good for you when we've been growing up in a society where fat is the enemy you know if you eat fat you know clog your arteries you get heart attacks yada 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 um and this just comes from misinformation okay um our government is still preaching our our macronutrient intake to come 45 to 65 percent from healthy whole grains right and carbohydrates so it's, it's hard for someone like me to get through to someone else and tell them listen fat doesn't raise your bad uh, cholesterol it raises good cholesterol HDL cholesterol which decreases your risk of um, developing plaque in your arteries and heart disease um, it decreases LDL cholesterol your bad cholesterol and, and more 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 in detail it's the small dense LDL particles that it that it decreases. We're starting to get more research on cholesterol and it's showing that LDL in general, the umbrella term, isn't necessarily the bad cholesterol. It's the small, dense LDL particles that are that are really dangerous because when they're in your body they could they're so small that they could just leach and, and get stuck into into little spaces in your body which could cause problems. So a ketogenic diet decreases that uh small LDL particles. The ketogenic diet is anti-inflammatory and inflammation is one of the key players in heart disease and metabolic syndrome. So um, ketogenic diets are just, it's a therapeutic diet. You know, um, back in the day before the pharmaceutical industry became a now multi-billion dollar industry, a ketogenic diet was literally the cure for epilepsy. When, when doctors started doing this high fat diet on their on on epilepsy uh, induced patients they saw dramatic results in the amount of seizures that the patients now didn't have some actually stopped having seizures altogether and it's just it, it, it we're in a society where fat is bad whole grains are healthy when really they're the enemy and be sure to get a ton of protein to, to build your muscle right um and we, we have to start converting this crowd of people who think that saturated fat causes heart disease and all this stuff to try it out for themselves. That's what we really need to do. If you're, if you're sitting there and, and you're just, you know, you're watching and you're like, you're just so set in your ways and, and, and you're not giving anything else a chance, you, you can't expect to improve. I mean, if you're sitting there and right now you're overweight, you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, you have high blood triglycerides, and you're eating carbs every day or you're eating shitty every day, it, is the way you're eating right now helping you? It, it, it's, it, it's what's contributed to the way you are right now. So why not try something different? Don't, don't be so close-minded. I mean, if, it's not, if the way you're eating right now isn't working for you, maybe you should try and opt for a new nutritional approach and do some research yourself, and you will be pleasantly surprised. I mean, ketogenic diets have, have shown in the research to be tremendous for type 2 diabetics. We give type 2 diabetics more glucose when they already have problems with glucose. 
it's like why why would why would we keep giving them carbs where which is gonna spike their blood sugar and then you're gonna need to give them a pump so that it comes back down and then you need to inject them with more glucose it's like give give them a high fat diet because fat has very little effect on blood sugar give them a ketogenic diet which doesn't have their blood sugar going like this and and, and see how well they improve and, and the research and the doctors are showing that they either come off their medication type 2 diabetics or the amount of glucose or injections that are needed drop tremendously from from starting a ketogenic diet so what what we need to do is we need to stop being so close-minded and we need to start looking at, at what's what's happening now like we, we all of everyone who's brought up whatever even I mean it could, it could be even 10 years ago but far further back is that carbs are good for us and that they, they contribute you know you need them for energy you need them to work out your brain needs them to function it's just it's it's not true anymore you know we live in a world that's evolving evolution we, we change and evolve every single day and one of the leading industries that is evolving every single year is the fitness and nutrition training and nutrition industry it's because we're doing so much research on the new the new approaches to the way we eat to see if we could reverse what is happening in the world with obesity and, and, and diabetes and, and all of these just illnesses that we bring upon ourselves. It, it's just, it's sad. So maybe you should think outside the box and start start taking control instead of just saying, no, 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 fat's bad for me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and eat good and, and, and just eat carbs because I know fat is gonna, is gonna give me like a heart attack or something. Stop with that thinking. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ugh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, here's, the, here's the truth of the matter, all right? When you cut fat in your diet, it's most likely replaced by carbohydrates, which are far more damaging to your health than fats will ever be, okay? Saturated fats found in butter, coconut oil, um, red meat, and then the monosat uh, monounsaturated fats that are found in you know, avocados, olive oil, macadamia nuts, these things consumed to satiety do not harm your health. They actually improve your health. Oh my God, I know it's, I know it sounds crazy, all right? I'm trying to convince you, and if I don't convince you myself, go do the research on your own, damn it. Um, they help keep you full. They don't have, they don't raise your blood sugar. They don't have spikes going up and down. That's why you hear anybody on keto they never complain about having a lack of energy or focus or mental clarity. It never, you, you never see it. There's a reason for that. This isn't a coincidence, you know? And that first week adapting into ketosis is going to be tough because now you're, you're, you're shifting your metabolic fuel from glucose to now fatty acids and ketones. Okay, this process takes some time. It takes about, the research shows, about four to six weeks to fully keto adapt and become efficient at, at burning ketones and fats because if you've been eating carbs your entire life what do you think is going to happen once you just drop them and increase your fat your body is going to it's going to go through a total metabolic shift and that's why the first week of, of, of adapting to keto is tough because you will you will experience some some lethargy you will experience some fatigue some cloudiness but that's just your body going through its transition and once you become adapted I'm telling you, I've went through it. I'm, t I'm, I'm speaking from experience. This is an opinion. I'm giving you what I've done and what several other people have done that I know that have started adapting this way of eating. And I'm telling you, you you're never hungry. I mean, you're just full because fat brings a sense of satiety. It's just what fat is. And you're not eating carbs at every meal, so your blood sugar isn't spiking and then starting to come down, and then all of a sudden you start getting hungry again and tired. So then you gotta eat again, and then it comes down and it's starting to come down, and then you gotta eat again because you're getting hungry. You get the picture. Um, we just have to get out of this mold that carbs are essential. Carbs, listen closely, carbs are not an essential nutrient. Essential means you need to consume them, you need them to live. Carbohydrates, you do not need them to live. You, you just don't. Because if, if all of a sudden, you know, you just cease consumption of carbohydrates, 
you know, right? There's none left, maybe from vegetables or wherever you're getting your five is carbohydrates from. You will not die, okay? You will survive. And most likely you will thrive in what you do, okay? Because contrary to what you believe, we can produce all the glucose our body needs inside our own body. We do not need to get it from an additional source, okay? And a lot of people think a ketogenic diet, a low carb diet means automatically high protein. That's not what a ketogenic diet, it, it's not high protein. It's high fat, moderate protein, very low carb because if you get to over 20% of your total caloric intake from protein, the additional protein that you don't use will be converted into glucose via gluconeogenesis. It's a process that happens in our body. And when this happens, your blood sugar gets spiked, which puts the brakes on ketone production, which is what you don't want. If you have too many carbs on a ketogenic diet, your blood sugar will spike. When insulin spikes, ketone production halts. A ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. And there's a reason why people feel great eating a lot of fat. It's because they're healthy. It's because they have a clear-minded focus. They have constant energy because nothing is drip dipping and going up and going down. It's, it's steady. They, they feel satiated. They're, I mean, how could you not feel full and awesome eating bacon? I mean, I post my, I post my meals for you guys all the time. I mean, I, I eat bacon every day. I eat butter every day. I eat red meat every day. And I know people are like, oh, I wonder what like, what is, um, you know, his values on, on his blood work and everything done. And I, I know that a lot of people are curious, so I'm actually getting my blood work done um, next month. But my girlfriend has also been following keto since we stopped our competition uh, a little bit before our competition in October. So she's been on it for about four or five months. And she, I actually had her get her blood work done today. So I'll report that on, um, I'll, I'll show you guys like what her values are. And I, um, I'm pretty much, I'm not going to say 100% sure because that's a pretty bold statement. But I'll say 99% sure that her numbers are um, extraordinary from increasing fat intake and lowering carbohydrate intake. I, I, I'm 99% sure that um, they are they are amazing. And I'll, and I'll post that on my uh, my Instagram and my Twitter, so be sure to uh, follow me on there. So the, fa so the fact of the matter is, you know, the scientific evidence shows that a ketogenic diet reduces visceral fat belly fat, which is the harmful fat, okay, visceral, we don't want visceral fat, okay, it reduces that, it lowers blood pressure, it lowers blood sugar, it lowers blood triglycerides, it lowers LDL, especially the small dense LDL particles, it increases HDL, John, you want me to keep going, okay, I'll keep, well, I'll keep going then, um, I made a little note here, um, there was a study done in uh, November of uh, 2005 in the Nutrition and Metabolism Journal by uh, Dr. Jeff Volok and uh, Dr. Richard Feynman. And they found, concluded that the markers, all the markers of metabolic syndrome, okay, that's the umbrella term now for obesity, overweight, uh, atherosclerosis, heart disease, um, type 2 diabetes, I mean, all, all the, this metabolic syndrome is that umbrella term for all those things. All the markers of metabolic syndrome are the same ones that Im that improved by carbohydrate restriction. Okay, this is not a coincidence. Also, cancer thrives on glucose. It thrives on sugar. That's why people who are experiencing the first stages of cancer and who have a have adapted a ketogenic diet there's there there's not there's not a hundred percent proof. On this okay because I'm not saying that I, that increasing your fat intake and lowering your carbohydrate intake will stop cancer cells from metastasizing I'm not saying that but there is very very good anecdotal evidence that has proven that lowering carbohydrate intake and glucose and increasing fat intake will slow the process of cancer cell 
metastasization. And there's a reason for that, it's because cancer cells thrive on glucose. So if you starve them of glucose, they now have to get it from somewhere else. So if you decrease carb intake, you're gonna slow down the reproduction of these cancer cells. And if you don't believe me, do the, go, go on your own, do the research, don't be closed-minded, okay? Because there's a reason things are starting to catch on now. And I'll tell you, in the next probably 10, 20 years, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a different story. You're not, gonna see health, you're not gonna see whole grains being touted as healthy anymore, okay? Guys, take my advice. If you have any questions, just email me, message me, anything. There's, I, I didn't wanna go into a, a video of how to get into ketosis, how to measure your ketones, what foods are great for a ketogenic diet, how much it improves training, how ketogenic dieting is, excuse me, how ketogenic diet is protein sparing, how ketogenic diet increases muscle mass and lean mass, how ketogenic dieting improves sleep and hormone production. I didn't want to go into all that because I just wanted to address the general. Okay, guys, so, so what I want you to do is I just want you to, to be open-minded. Don't be closed-minded. Change. Change with the times. It, it's not fat doesn't cause heart disease. It doesn't cause plaque in your arteries. It doesn't uh, make you have a heart attack or a stroke. I mean, HDL has been proven to rise in most people who follow a low carb, high fat diet. And this is one of the main reasons that a ketogenic diet doesn't increase the rate of heart disease. Because when HDL is low and LDL is high, that is when heart disease is at a very, very high risk. The best way to raise HDL cholesterol, eat whole eggs, Okay, eat whole eggs, right? Yolks, because yolks are f fucking bad for you, right? Like they, they, they cause, they, they increase bad cholesterol. Whole, no, they don't. They don't anymore, guys. Okay, eat whole eggs and eat saturated fat. That's how you will raise HDL, good cholesterol, decrease LDL, bad cholesterol. If you don't believe me, do the research. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, whatever your next you know, idea or, or thing you're not sure about or something that's just not clear and, and you think it would benefit a lot more people, ask us questions, email us, go to our site, contact us, and we will be sure to continue helping you guys out there. It's a new year. I'm not going to say a new you because a new year doesn't mean shit if you don't change anything that you're doing. So be sure to, with every single day, do something that's gonna gear you towards success, whether it be in the gym, in your studies, in your relationships, in your career, nutrition, whatever it may be. Do something every single day that's gonna improve you because sooner or later, I'm telling you, success is, is right around the corner and, and your miracle is gonna happen. Your time is coming, believe me. So uh, God bless you guys. Take care, all right? Whole Hustle Fitness.